Thanks, uh, Anders, for taking some time today to uh, have a chat. You have been uh, working for the Goodie Box now for a year or two. Nowadays, as director of growth, and it's really valuable for us uh, to get some um, yeah, information from you uh, on uh, how you've experienced, let's say, the growth of, uh, of the company and also of the team. I think it was like last year in March when we, when we got in touch. Yes, so back then uh, at Goodie Box, we were just kickstarting our growth yeah. adventure. And we have for seven years been selling happiness, as we say, to women all over Denmark. Yeah. And we wanted to expand that to, to Europe. We were two persons working with growth, 30 people in the company in total, 18,000 subscribers just in the Danish market. Fast forward two years forward, 85K subscribers, five markets, 14 people working with growth, two countries, yeah. two offices, and five teams. Yeah. And then the supportive teams also just expanded to 100 people in total. So to start that journey, the most important things for us were the growth aspects. We've expanded to our content team, we've expanded yeah. to our creative team because we realize that for us to grow at the pace we want, we need to the entire organization to have the same mindset. What is the, the goal for the company? Where do you want to take it? And basically, right now we had a phase where we, we tripled last year yeah. uh, and we will triple this year, or that's the goal, and we will also have a goal of tripling next year. Currently, the main focus is to, to continue our land grabbing strategy as it's defined by opening up the Goodie Box concept to new markets. And yeah, we've, we've grown from one market to, to five markets in, in a year. And have planned to open four more markets up here in 2019, so it'll, it'll be eight, year, eight markets in, uh, in, in a year and a half. So, What do you think has contributed most to uh, the growth of, uh, of the company? That's a good question. The concept itself and the, the, the overall team yeah. and the people behind. I mean, we have so low churn of employees because we can remain constant in that sense. We can have more people on, but everyone knows what's required and where we're going. Yeah. So culturally, the organization that follows. Yeah. So there's a pretty clear culture for what we want to achieve. And I think those things are more important than whether it comes down to the, the TV ad worked. Yeah. Or you open the new market and you, boom, they were ready for goodie box. Yeah. I and mean, of course, those things are what shows on the numbers <laughs> when the investors look, oh, Sweden is performing well. Yeah. But the, all the hard work behind that is, is the team yeah. effort and that we constantly adapt and learn for how to, can we do the scale up more efficiently and yeah. faster than we've, we've done before. You think that the team is really staying on because you give them a lot of freedom? Let's say you invest in them, yeah, in their education. And but yes, there's a very big focus on, on, on the team and the people. That's actually our old tagline, but it's like unbox happiness. That's what we told our customers. Yeah. Internally, we still have this. That's not being rebranded yet, but it's unboxing inner happiness. There's really a sincere focus on that. We have bi-weekly uh, employee satisfaction surveys and, yeah, of course. and different things. Basically, we're trying to get rid of all the excuses for not uh, being able to focus on growing the company and being happy. Do you manage to find people with the right kind of skills or is it like something that you yes. run into? Yeah, exactly. So before being able to grow, we need to find the right people to, to fuel that growth. The skills needed now is not the same as uh, three months ago. And it sounds crazy, but I mean, we, I think we're 40 more people now than we were three months ago. Yeah. We are seeing, if we take the growth team as an example, the structure and the process we've built up, uh, we are evaluating, is that still the right thing? Since the last year and a half when we, when we started working together, I think it's changed maybe three or four times the structure we've, we've the taken of yeah. the organization yeah. and the growth teams. But we are learning from it and adapting, and that's the most important, important, important part, and constantly then also changing what sort of people do we need. So we know, for instance, we need more skilled people now than we believe we did nine months ago. Define skilled? Yeah, skilled in the sense that they need to have more experience in deriving growth projects. Yeah. They can be fresh out of school, but they need to have proven experience. So, so, we, so they hit the ground running, basically. Yeah. Having hired a few more senior resources in that sense, is more specialized and actually working hardcore with growth, yeah. has helped how fast we can experiment in new markets, how fast we can launch new markets, yeah. and can improve more parts of the business than just their own uh, focus area. Working a lot with the, the Dutch and the, the Belgium team, I see that they really, let's say, they embody growth, you know, and drive growth in uh, what they're doing. How do you maintain that within these teams? The team is working a lot on that and focusing a lot on that. So there's weekly visits, whether it's country managers visiting or the CEO <laughs> visiting or the founders, or yeah. whether it's from, from the Dutch office to the Danish or the other way around. All right. Uh, and uh, there's open communication through, yeah, instant messages through Slack. And well, uh, win, fail boards, this kind of stuff, do you use this within the team? Like we, we don't have a win and fail board, but uh, let's say we're not afraid of uh, sharing our failures at least. Yeah. 
I think that's again one of the things we, we took away from here that failing is a prerequisite yeah. for, uh, for winning in the end. It's now an integrated part of the culture, not only in the growth team. So it's also make it easier for people to fail. They're not afraid of that. Yeah. In terms of, let's say, you said different teams are also working according to the growth process. Mm -hmm. How are you facilitating the, 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 the knowledge sharing? Like? That's actually one of the parts that we're still struggling with. In the beginning, everyone had, like the, the few persons we had, had to know everything and do it, the, the process themselves more or less. Yeah. Now we're a bigger team, so we need to tap into the different teams. But actually, we're also considering to set up some squads which follows more of your, your way of thinking yeah. or education uh, because we can see it's not scalable the way we then for the past maybe eight months have worked. We're kind of constantly reconsidering what's the best uh, setup for us. And coming from 25 people to 100 people in 10 months, no process uh, fits, fits all, right? It's just experimentation, right? See what and structure works best. Yeah, exactly. So we're not only exper experimenting on the channels, we're also experimenting on what are the, the best uh, setup for now. So for instance, now we have one dedicated designer for each growth team. Yeah. We, the last three weeks we've tested that. Up until then, we, the, the designers was only supported. Now they are part of the growth team. Okay. Does that bring more value? Does that pay, speed up the experimentation process? Or do they need new, new skills all of a sudden? Right. If they then need new skills, do we need to educate them those skills? Yeah. Uh, in this example, the designers. Uh, or do we need to restructure again because it wasn't efficient? Those things we experiment with and, and, and try to see what's most efficient for us. When you hire someone, right? When you want to onboard somebody in the team, what is the skill that's really like essential uh, for you to have on board? Again, the prerequisite before coming to the skills is the growth mindset. Yeah. And of course, a cultural mindset that fits the, the given organization. Having a, a hacky mindset or a yeah. self-driven mindset will, will get you in front of the row. Because then you can learn about email or AI even or whatever these things are. And I think that's a bigger prerequisite and a more important skill to, to remain yeah. rather than having a Facebook specialist coming out because that will become obsolete one day. But if you have the mindset about uh, being able to learn new things yeah. because you don't even know, I guess, what your direction will be. You don't even know if conversion rate optimization is your thing, if you like BI or if you like data analysis, yeah. if you like Facebook marketing. You don't know when you come out of school, right? Or if you're so, going to need it in two years. Or if you're going to need it, right? So instead of focusing on that specific skill, maybe yeah. focus more on having the mindset that can put you in the positions in the right direction for yeah. where you want to go. Great. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Um, uh, yeah, I hope to see you uh, again. <laughs> if you have advanced, advanced, uh, of course, I'll be back.